Hello and welcome to another part of my quest system series. First I would like to apologize because it took me so long to record the next video but my project crashed and so I had to redo everything we did until now which was really annoying but now I've got that done so let's proceed. In the last episode we set it up so that we can add quests using the G key and also when we hit I we can see our mouse cursor and select different sub goals or if we hit G again add another quest and then use our mouse to select different quests. However currently our player has no idea where he has to go to complete certain goals so we will add a system that helps the player to find the way to the location of his current goal. To do that let's just exit the play mode, go to our blueprints, actors and to the BP goal actor, open that in full blueprint editor and in the viewport we will add a sprite component. Let's call that minimap icon and the source sprite will be npc underscore icon sprite. Then I'll rotate that by minus 90 in x so it will face our minimap camera and we can move that up somewhere like 100 and z. Also let's go to the event graph and add an event begin play because we don't want to see the sprite in the actual level and only on the minimap. To do that we will set the owner of this sprite to the player character. Connect that. After that drag in our minimap icon and set owner no C to true. Compile save. That's it for our BP goal actor. Then we will need to add an arrow to our minimap that indicates the direction in which our player has to head. For that let's go to our widget, to the minimap widget and here to the overlay we will add another image. Call that direction arrow. Let's align that horizontally to the center, vertically to the top, that should work. The image for that will be our map arrow. Also if you don't have the texture already there will be a download link to another texture pack in the description. Forgot to mention that. Let's give that a padding of let's say 10 pixel to the top. And we can also give that a tint. Something like a yellow tint. Will work. Then let's set the visibility to hidden by default. And now the thing is that we want to rotate that direction arrow around our minimap circle here. That we can do with our angle. But you can see that if we type in 90 for example, it only rotates and stays at the same place. To change that we will have to set the pivot point to the center of our circle. Now you can experiment with some values here and see that moving around. We now want to attach that to the right center here because it says 90 degrees. So play with that values until it fits. I found out that 4.7 for Y with an X value of 0.4 works perfectly for me. After you found out the correct pivot point, reset the angle to 0. Compile, save, close the minimap. Then let's go to our main widget because we will also add some text that displays the distance to our current goal. For that we will first add a border called distance border, make that a variable, anchor to the top right corner, let's clear the padding for that and then give it a padding of 15 pixels from the right. Also under brush we will search for border and then select the distance border that will also be included in the texture pack that you can download in the description. Now we will set the size in X to the size of our image, so 180 and in Y do the same thing, 60. The Z order should be 0, so it appears beneath our minimap. Actually check the horizontally aligned center and vertically as well for our child settings. We will also set the alignment in X to 1 and the position in X will then be minus 252 and in Y 188 
Then let's go to our minimap and increase the Z order to 1. Finally, we will also set that visibility to hidden by default, since we will only show that when we select a subquest that has a defined location. After that, add a horizontal box to our distance border. Add an image to that box. For the image, select the steps icon, will also be in the texture pack. And let's lower the image size to 40 by 40 pixel maybe. Align that to the left and vertically center. Then let's add another text. Call that the distance text. Make that a variable. Also align that to the left and vertically to the center. For the text let's type in 999 by default. Increase the font size to 30 maybe, set the type to light or whatever you want. And let's also go to the shadow color, make that opaque. After that we will compile, save, close the main widget. Head over to our blueprints folder to the BP Quest manager. Here let's add a new function called distance to goal. That will have an output which will be an integer called distance. Make that a pure function. And what we will do is drag in our third person character, get actor location, then right click on the return way to split that. And we will make a new vector, connect the X and Y, but not the Z. So we will zero out differences in the height which I think is done in most games. Then we will subtract from that return value and let's drag in our current goal actor, get actor location of that one. Again break it, make vector, connect x and y, z will be left to zero, connect the return value to our subtraction here. Then we will get the length of that And that will be the distance between our two actors in Unreal units, so the number will be fairly high. To convert that into a more appropriate unit, like for example steps, you could divide that by 100. That's just the value that I found worked well enough when I experimented with that. Then we will round that, or truncate, doesn't really matter, and connect the return value to the distance. The next function will be called update direction arrow. What we'll do here is get our main widget, get the map, get the direction arrow and we will set render angle. Now we also have to find out what our new angle is and for that let's drag in our third person character again, get actor location. And then we will use a function called find look at rotation. The start will be the location of a third person share and the target will be our current goal actor's location. So let's connect that to the target. Then we will also have to break our return value, break the rotator, and we will only connect the Z, which is the yaw. After that we can return, compile and save. Now that's it for the functions that we had to create. Then in our event graph there is our on switch subquest event that we already set up to be called in the last parts, but it doesn't really do anything yet, so we will change that. First, let's check whether our current goal actor is already valid. If that is the case, we will drag that in and destroy it. Afterwards, we will set current sub goal, and that will come from our current quest. Get the quest info, break it. 
expand that and from our sub goals array we will get at the selected sub goal index of our current quest. So that is our current sub goal. Let's connect that here. Afterwards directly break it and expand that. Break the location. We will add a branch by holding B and left clicking. Connect the has location. Because if it has a location we will then create a new current goal actor. So let's do false path first because then we will set the current goal actor to null. Which I guess you don't even have to do because we destroy it here. But let's just do that for now. And drag in the main widget. Get the distance border. Get the map and get its direction arrow. Off of one of these we will set visibility to hidden and then connect the other one. Connect that to the execution here and that's everything we had to do for our false path. But if it has a location we will spawn actor from class. The class will be our goal actor, BP goal actor. Let's right click on the spawn transform and connect the location of our break s underscore location info. Also we will select always spawn ignore collisions. Connect that to the true path. After we spawned it we will set our current goal actor to that return value. And drag in the distance to goal. Promote that to a variable called current distance. Afterwards, drag in the main widget, get the distance text, and set text. The in text will be our current distance converted to a text. Also, let's expand that and uncheck use grouping if you don't want that to happen. Also, we will call update direction arrow. Then let's copy over what we did before here. Paste that. So for our distance border, we will set the visibility to hit test invisible. And let's actually disconnect the direction arrow because we will set visibility for that but to something else. Because you only want that direction arrow to appear when your player character is far away from the goal and doesn't see it on the minimap. So we will perform a check here, drag in the current distance and check whether it's greater than a certain amount. Let's promote that to a variable which will be show arrow amount or let's better call that show direction arrow amount. The unit for that will be the steps that we define. So unreal units divided by 100. I will set that to 10 and let's add a select node here. Connect that to the visibility. So if our current distance is greater than the show direction arrow amount, we will set that to hit test invisible. And if not, we will set it to hidden. Also, we will need to update our distance and direction every time the player moves. So somewhere down here, create a custom event on player move. Let's first check whether there is a current goal actor that is valid. Otherwise we don't have to update anything. If it is valid, let's get the distance to goal, promote that to our current distance. Then we will set the distance text, so get the main widget, distance text, set text. Connect the current distance here again, like we did before. And let's uncheck use grouping. After that we will call a function named compare integer. And let's compare our current distance with the show direction arrow amount. If it's greater or equal we will call update direction arrow. Then go into a do once node. And we will get the main widget, get the map get the direction arrow, set visibility, 
to hit test invisible so we will show that once because that event will be fired multiple times so every time our player moves and we only want to set that visible once because of performance reasons but if it's less than we will also go into do once node and let's copy over our set visibility and everything but this time we will set it to hidden and actually when we set it to hit test invisible we want to be able to set it to hidden again so after that we will reset the other do once node and do the same thing down here so when we set it to hidden we will reset the do once and therefore be able again to show the direction arrow now of course we still need to call that function that we will do in our third person character so down here we've got movement inputs and one thing I would like to do so that our event is not fired the whole time is to check whether that axis value does not equal zero at a branch only if that's true we will set or add a movement input here copy that for input axis move right and afterwards drag in the quest manager reference and call on player move connect that to the add movement input from input axis move forward and to the other one now we can close that and one thing we will need to do is actually set up locations for our quest. So just to find out where they are, you can go to Blueprints Actors and drag in a BP Gold Actor. Then you can position that wherever you want. So let's move that somewhere to the corner here. Then right click on the location and copy that. Let's go to our Quest Actors. Quest 1, maybe go to index 2, meaning the third entry, talk to Legolas, let's go to the location, it will have a location, and let's paste that here, then compile, save, close it, and we can then delete the goal actor here. Let's play, if we hit G, first nothing appears, but if we hit I and go to talk to Legolas, we can see that it's 18 steps away and our little arrow shows the player the direction. We can also see that updating when we move around. Now the distance is less than 10 steps and we can see the sprite though it's really tiny so let's change that later. And you can see that our arrow disappeared. So let's close that and go back to our actors, goal actor, viewport and one thing I also forgot was to uncheck generate overlaps and set the collision to no collision because it's only visible for our minimap. Then we will increase the scale to 2.5 maybe and let's move that up a bit more in Z. Compile save. Let's play now. Hit G. Select our talk quest here. And actually when we select another one it directly disappears now you can see it much better that there's our goal. Alright, that's it for today's episode. See you in the next one.